Hello students, today we will cover the part 3 of the story Even Strides and O Level. Today I will do page 75 to 80. So on page 75 we start. So before we do this part, let me give you a little recap of the story. So in the beginning we find out that the, there is a telephonic conversation between the secretary of the examination board and the governor of the Oxford prison. Now Evans is a prisoner in the Oxford prison. He is a congenital kleptomaniac. That is congenital kleptomaniac means congenital means something present from birth and kleptomaniac means a person who has a habit of stealing and it is a kind of a mental disease so Evans is a congenital kleptomaniac so he has the wish to appear for the O level exam for the German language so for this the examination board secretary of the examination board asks governor that how what kind of a prisoner was Evans so at this the governor says that he was not a very troublesome prisoner only thing he was a congenital kleptomania but he was a very uh, star kind of a prisoner that is he used to perform in the Christmas time and moreover he could also copy the great comedian Mike Yawood. So all this brought that he was not a very violent kind of a prisoner. At this he uh, the prisoner uh, is allowed to give the O level exam in the German language. So here we after this we do that uh, the um, events was to be the uh, kept in incommunicado and he was to sit in his own cell and appear for the exam. For this the invigilator would be coming would be a parson a parson means a churchman whose name was Stuart MacLeary from the St. Max uh, church and from there he would be coming to invigilate so here uh, we find out that the everything is set the examination is started and MacLeary was to arrive so here also we uh, get to know about the two prison officers that is Jackson who was the senior prison officer and Stephenson who was the junior prison officer. So from here we go. So they keep checking what uh, all things Evans was having in with him in the cell. So on page 75 we start from here. Evans drew the razor carefully down his left cheek and left a neat swath in the white lather. So Evans had been told to uh, do uh, proper um, preparation for his exam, exam and he was to sit neatly and he also had to shave. So as he drew the razor carefully down his left cheek, a left it and left a neat swath. Swath means a gap in the white lather. Lather is what? This this soap which is used as a shaving cream. This creates a prison. in cells he is in the cell means he is fully in captivation he is fully uh, guarded so even puts this question that he why was so much to be taken uh, to spy on him he nodded his head vaguely to a point above the door so uh, even just saw showed it a point above the door that is in
that is the headphone which was installed at the um, at the top of the door was not a very neatly done conceded means admitted jackson they are not they don't honestly think i am not going to try to so even states that they are not means the the headphone was not installed in a very neat way so here they are not here that is they are not done very neatly they don't exactly think i am going to try to is incomplete that is incomplete that is he says that he they don't think that he is going to try to run what is it it, it means to run i'm oh, sorry this is what to run i don't know why this is not being done okay so here they are taking uh, they are taking no chances events nobody in his chest in his senses would take any chance with you so jackson replies to events that the people the, the officers in the uh, oxford prison would not take any chances because nobody in his senses means nobody in his reason in his logic can take any chance with you so who is this you this you is uh, this you is um, events that is uh, events had uh, be known as events the break and he had be he had escaped from the he had escaped from the prison three times so he was known as events the break means he has he had the reputation of breaking the prison so when jackson says that nobody in his senses would take any chance with events who's going to listen in so events tells that who is going to listen to that headphone to the uh, other end to receive all the words i'll tell you who's going to listen in laddie so jackson says that he would be telling that to whom he uh, his who will be listening to what he is doing and everyone will be very watchful so laddie means lad that is he is addressing to uh, events it's the governor himself see that is it's the governor of the jail himself who would would be very much carefully listening to everything what is going on he don't trust you a bloody inch so jackson says he uh, the governor did not trust events a little bit also and nor do i so jackson says that he also did not trust he also did not believe in any movement of the of events because events had been escaping the jail thrice he has escaped the jail and he was known as events the break i'll be watching you like a hawk so this is the what the hawk you know this bird this is the picture is of a hawk so this bird is very very vigilant the eyes also are fixed so jackson is telling that he would be also watching over events like a hawk so keep your nose clean so what is jackson advising him to keep his nose clean that is to stay out in trouble he is in a lot of vigilance he is looked watched by each and every prison authority he walked towards the door even facing the door sat quietly at the father of the two tables his all attention riveted to a textbook of elementary german grammar so evens was facing the door and he sat quietly at the farther farther means at the far end of the two tables two tables were kept the arrangement is uh, earlier discussed his all attention riveted that is he was paying his fixed attention riveted means fixed to a textbook of elementary german grammar elementary means the basic the primary book of german grammar stephens took the key from its ring and the cell lock sprang back with a thudded metal metallic twang 
So Stephens took the key from its ring and the cell lock sprang back with a, that is, it opened with a metallic twang. Twang means a noise, a sound. It was 9.10 a.m. when the governor switched on the receiver. So at 9.10, the governor switched on the receiver of the phone. He had instructed Jackson to tell events of the temporary little precaution that was only fair. So, uh, Governor wanted Jackson to tell events that there were a lot of guarding being done on him because this was a temporary little precaution they were taking. That was only a fair little chance as if Evans would not spot it. So Evans for himself had spotted. He could himself see the headphone which was above the door. But wasn't it all a bit theatrical? So uh, it was the, the author uh, writes here that wasn't everything very theatrical because Evans was a very clever prisoner. He would dupe every authority and escape from the prison. So this is theatrical means what? dramatical schoolboyish almost schoolboyish means it is just like it is so simple as the schoolboys do how on earth was evans going to try anything on today if he was so anxious to make another break why in heaven's name Hadn't he tried it from the recreational block? Much easier. So the um, author is writing here that on earth why will Evans try to do anything on today? It wasn't possible. If he really was so anxious, so eager to make another break, means another time he wanted to escape. Why in heaven's name it would have been easier if he had tried it from the recreational block where he was kept. Now in the recreational block, there was less guarding. Alright, there was less guarding. But here everything was in strict guard and it was much easier in the recreational block. And there he was now sitting in a locked cell, all the prison officers on the alert, two more locked doors between his cell. So what are the precautions taken? That he was sitting in a locked cell and all the prison number one he was in a locked cell this is number one this is sorry this is number one number two all the prison officers were alerted they were alert and number three was two more locked doors were between his cell his cell and the yard and a yard with a wall. So there were two locked doors between his cell, that is the room where he was, and the yard, the open space. And uh, between the yard and his cell, uh, there was a wall which was as high as a uh, as a haystack. So with uh, it was between the wall and the yard, they, it was as that the wall was as high as a haystack. I hope you know what is a haystack. They are huge collection of all the grains and it is made very high. Yes, Evans was as safe as houses. So they were very confident that Evans was as safe, that is he is as guarded, as uh, safe, as properly protected as a person is in his uh, own, in the houses. In an enclosed place you can say. Anyway, it would not be any trouble at all to have the receiver turned on for the next couple of hours or so. It wasn't as if there was going to be anything to listen to, was it? So, uh, the governor was thinking that it would be very uh, convenient if they keep the receiver on for the next couple of hours. Couple means two hours. And it wasn't as if there was anything to listen from the cell room. Amongst other things, an invigilator's duty was to ensure that the strictest silence was observed. So, uh, I hope you all know what who is an invigilator is a person who guards the examinees when they are giving the examination. So, what is the invigilator's first duty is to see 
that there is silence in the examination hall. But, but, still that little nagging doubt might even try to take an advantage of MacLeary. So, they think that there is a little nagging doubt, that persistent doubt in their mind is that if Evans tries to take advantage, that is, tries to attack the uh, churchman MacLeary, get him to struggle in a chisel or two, sorry, get him to smuggle in a chisel or two or a rope ladder or, that is, so he can take advantage of the MacLeary and he can also uh, ask, MacLeary, the invigilator, get him to bring some to smuggle. Smuggle means to illegally bring a chisel. This is a chisel. This is a chisel. Or to or a rope, la rope ladder to escape from the prison. So all these doubts were coming in the mind of the governor. The governor sat up sharply. It was all very well getting rid of any potential weapon that Evans could have used. But what about MacLeary? What if quite unwittingly the innocent MacLeary had brought in something himself? So the governor sat up very sharply thinking about all the possible ways of escape. He says that Evans was well checked. All the potential weapons were taken away. That is the nail scissor, nail filer, the... Mm, mm, what else? The razor, the nail file, the nail cutter, everything they had taken and the razor also. So, but then the governor, it also struck the governor that if quite unwittingly, unwittingly means unknowingly. So, it is unknowingly. The innocent MacLeary had brought in something himself with which the uh, events would take the advantage of escaping. Now students please keep patience and understand each word and if you like my teaching please like the uh, video share with your friends so that I too would be much more interested loved to see that you all are liking sharing and I would feel happy to teach many more such chapters. A jackknife perhaps. So the governor thinks that if he brings a jackknife. Jackknife is used to cut papers. To just separate the papers. And what if Evans held him hostage just with such a weapon. So the governor is thinking that Evans tries to hold him hostage. That is attack him. And with such a weapon as a jackknife. If the invigilator brings it. The governor reached for the phone. It was 9-12 a.m. The examinee and the invigilator had already been introduced by Stephens when Jackson came back and shouted to MacLeary through the cell door. So, the, who is the examinee? The examinee is Evans and examinee is Evans and the invigilator is MacLeary. Both are uh, being introduced by Stephens when Jackson came back and shouted through the cell door. Can you come outside a minute, sir? You too, Stephens. So, uh, Stephens and Jackson came back and shouted to MacLeary, both of them. That is, Stephens, uh, Jackson called to Stephens, the junior prison officer, and MacLeary, the invigilator. And MacLeary is also a, as the parson. So, he, uh, both of them are called out by Jackson for a minute. Jackson quickly explained the governor's worries. So, Jackson gave the whole picture of what the governor was worrying about. About all the weapons, about uh, any kind of attack by events. And Mac Leary patiently held out his arm and shoulder level while Jackson lightly frisked his clothes. So, Matt Leary, what did he do? He patiently held out his arms, just like this arms and shoulder level while Jackson lightly frisked. Frisked means what? To check. In the malls, where, when, you are, when you go in the malls, you know, the, uh, the, the security guard, they frisk you. Means they check of any kind of unnecessary things belonging to the person. 
something hard here sir so he uh, sees that something hard is here my reading glasses replied macleary looking down at the spectacle case so what was hard in his uh, pocket or somewhere he must have kept that is his reading glasses jackson quickly reassured him and bending down on the landing thumb flicked the catches on the suitcase so what did jackson do he reassured him that he can keep his glasses and then he thumb flicked that is thumb flicked is what thumb flick that is with his thumb he just flicked he just made a movement at the catches on the suitcase now catches are the lock on the suitcase suitcase is the box which he had brought he picked up each envelope in turn carefully passed his palms uh, along their surfaces and seemed satisfied that is all the envelopes he took out he picked up and he uh, he checked them and he was satisfied he ripped cursorily through a few pages of holy writ rift means just turn uh, one by one after the other pages of the holy writ holy writ is the bible this is the bible he was a parson no so he had brought the holy book bible and vaguely shook the church times so this is the journal which he had brought and we come to know about all this in the beginning only that these things he had brought that is he had to give a speech at the women's guild and therefore he needed the bible uh, he brought the book of ruth and he also had brought the church times here all right so far but one of the objects in macleary's suitcase was puzzling him solely that is one thing was very much disturbing him puzzling him means very much inquisitive about uh, in the macleary's box do you mind telling me why you have brought this sir he held up a smallish semi inflated rubber ring such as a young child with a waist of about 12 inches so what had uh, so much puzzled uh, jackson that there was a semi inflated rubber ring with a waist of about 12 inches might have struggled in so you are you thinking of going for a swim sir so jackson is asking that whether macleary was going for a swim it was a rubber tube kind of a thing but it was inflated that is there was it was blown it was not deflated it was inflated macleary's hitherto amiable demeanor so hitherto means earlier earlier as he was amiable is friendly demeanor is manner or behavior was slightly ruffled that is was slightly disturbed by his tasteless little presenty so what did he do he was slightly ruffled he was slightly disturbed by the tasteless which is unwanted little pleasantry when he saw the rubber tube he said will you go for swimming pleasantry means joke and he answered jackson somewhat sourly sourly means rudely sorry rudely that is here i write he answered him rudely so if you must e means if you must know i suffer from hemorrhoids so hemorrhoids are what if that he says that if you want to know that he suffered from hemorrhoids so hemorrhoids are piles which which a person has at the lower back so and when i'm sitting down for a length of time so he gives the excuse that he had brought the inflated rubber tube why he wanted to sit on those because he had piles and he could not sit for long time very sorry sir i did not mean to err the embarrassment was still reddening jackson's teeth now jackson the senior prison officer was really embarrassed at his question to macleary and he says that he was really sorry and jackson cheeks when he found the paper knife at the bottom of the case and what else he found he found a paper knife at the bottom of the case i think so here he says i think that sorry so i think i'd better there was a paper knife but i'd better keep this though 
if you don't mind that is sir so he takes away the paper knife embarrassed means what embarrassment when when a person is feels very uneasy not uh, when a person feels very uneasy then he is embarrassed it was 9 18 am so what was the time it was 9 past 18 minutes before the governor heard their voices again and it was clear that the examination was going to be more than a little late in getting under way that is it was 9 8 um, 9 9 o'clock 9 18 minutes past 9 o'clock in the morning am means morning and it, the governor understood that it would be a little late to start macleer you have got a watch yes sir macleer i'll be telling you when to start and again when you have 5 minutes left all right silence so macleer says that asks uh, evens that did he have the watch so even says yes he has and then macleer gives the instruction that he'll be telling him when to start and again when he five minutes are left so all these are told by the invigilator in the examination hall after that there was silence macleer there's plenty more of this writing paper should you need it so there was plenty more of writing paper if he needed it macleary now write the name of the paper 021-1 in the top left hand corner so macleary gives the instruction that on the paper he has to write this number 021 by 1 in the top left hand corner and there was again the silence macleary in the top right hand corner write your index number 313 so first he gives the number 021 0 sorry 021 and then he gives the number 313 and in the box just below that write your center number 271 all right so all these instructions mac leary gives now students let me tell you that you will understand when you do the whole chapter that mac leary is also an accomplice in the escaping of events he is a known person to events and all these numbers he is giving the address to where events would be escaping so mac leary is what he is not the original mac leary the original mac leary that is the person has been gagged in his flat and kept and this mac leary is a friend or accomplice of evans who helps him to escape from the jail 9:20 am mac leary i am now going to he is not going to stay here is he so even says that he is not going to stay here that is he doesn't want stephens to stay there i don't know about that i so mac leary says that he did not know about that stephens mr jackson given me strict instructions to so stephens that is the junior prison officer says that mr jackson had given him the strict instructions to be there evens how am i supposed to concentrate on my exam with someone breathing down my neck christ sorry sir i did not mean so evens objected that he would be disturbed if there is another person standing there in the examination cell the governor reached for the phone jackson ah good get stephens out of that cell will you i think we are perhaps overdoing things now i hope you are having a very clear picture that there is a headphone and the governor in his room from his room he could hear everything what is going on in the cell so he instructs the senior prison officer to let stephens out of the cell because he says that they were overdoing everything was so protected and you see this is called the um, this is called the battle of wits between the governor and the events the governor is fooled and events escapes from the prison from under his nose only as you wish sir the governor heard the exchanges in the cell heard the door clang once more and heard macleary announce that the examination had begun at last and what was the time it was 9:25 am 
and there was a great calm. That is Stephen's left the room and the examination started at 9.25 a.m. Now students, I hope you are following it. If you don't follow, please ask me in the comment box and be sure to like, share and subscribe the video with your friends so that I also get a little more happier to teach you all. At 9.40 a.m. the examination board rang through and the assistant secretary with special responsibility for modern languages asked to speak to the governor. The examination had already started, no doubt. Ah, a quarter of an hour ago. So the examination had already started and it was a quarter of an hour ago. That is 15 minutes. Quarter of an hour ago means 15 minutes ago. All right. Yes, well, there was a correction slip. So from the examination board, a correction slip came which some fool had forgotten to place in the examination package. So in the examination package means the envelopes which had all the authentication card and um, question paper, all those things, extra papers. So very brief, that is it is a very small correction. Very brief means very small. Could the governor please? Yes, of course. I'll put you straight through to Mr. Jackson in D-Wing. Hold the line a minute. Was this the sort of the thing of thing the governor had feared? So the governor was a little skeptical. He had a doubt that was it a kind of a problem which would be they would be uh, getting in, in in soon. Was the phone call a fake? So governor asked that was the phone call a false one. Fake means a false phone call. So here, so here we, that is false. Some secret message was there, but he could check on that. So the governor was very, very doubtful and he was very, very uh, careful also that let not any kind of message come to help events to escape again. He dialed the number of the examination board but heard only the staccato bleeps of a line engaged. So what did the governor do? He again called at the examination board but what did he hear? He heard the staccato bleeps. So staccato bleeps are a kind of a music in intervals. So when a line is engaged what on the phone we get no ting, 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 like this we get some kind of a music comes that the line is engaged. So the governor understood that that must be the examination board must be busy with that busy on another call but then the line was engaged wasn't it yes not very intelligent that so the governor laughs on himself he says that it wasn't a very intelligent act of his or intelligent thought of his that he was thinking like this two minutes later he heard some whispered communication in the cell and then MacLeary's broad scots voice so he could hear uh, whispering in the cell and then MacLeary gave the broad Scots voice. Scots means the Scottish accent. A person belonging to Scotland. So he could hear MacLeary's voice. Will you please? So the church which is referred, St. Mary's Max, is in England. So the Scottish voice is also very obvious with Mackley. He must have been belonging to Scotland. Will you please stop writing a wee little, wee while, means a little while. So what is this wee while, wee while means a little while for some time. You please stop writing, the invigilator Mackley is telling. Mr. Evans, and listen carefully. Candidates offering German 0211 should note the following correction. So it is uh, it is done in a very, very usual, normal way as the examination is taken and an invigilator uh, announces something. On page 3, line 15, fourth word should read Glodenin, not Golden, and whole phrase will therefore read Zam Glodenin Loin, not Zam Glodenin Loin. I'll repeat that. Now, in these words, he gives the 
add name of the hotel to where name of the hotel to where events would be lodging in his escape that was a golden lion hotel the governor listened and smiled he had taken german in the sixth form so the governor also knew a little german and in his sixth class he had remembered and remembered all about the agreements of adjectives so he remembers a little grammar of the german language and so did macleary by the sound of things for the minister's pronunciation now who is a minister a minister's pro- minister is sorry minister is uh, the churchman so macleary was a churchman he was a proctor he was a parson pronunci- pronunciation was most impressive but what about events he probably did not know what an adjective was he was very little he knew about german language this governor was very sure the phone rang again the magistrate scored they needed a prison van and a couple of prison officers so the phone again ran and what did the uh, voice say that it was the magistrate's court and ne- they needed a lot of things they needed a prison van a couple of prison officers and all this they needed remand case remand case means when a case is referred from a higher court to the lower court or uh, transferring a case from one court to another and within 2 minutes the governor was wondering whether there could be a hoax so he was thinking that he, whether it was a hoax it was a hoax it was a prank played by all the people helping events and it indeed was this all the other people who all are helping and calling they are all the accomplices of uh, events so you remember this word they are the the accomplices they are not friends accomplices are the people who help in some crime all right uh, so his imagination was beginning to run riot that is run riot means run wild he was thinking that he was acting very uh, silly but it was becoming very wavered he was thinking more and more that were was he getting fooled and he actually gets fooled because events will escape Events for the first quarter of an hour, Stephens had dutifully peered through the peephole at intervals of one minute or so. So the first quarter of an hour means first quarter is fifteen minutes. Events just peeped through the peephole. I have given the picture here, or one minute or so. And after that, after every two minutes, at ten forty-five a.m., everything was still all right as he looked through the peephole once more, and it took four or five seconds, not more. so at 10:45 he again looked through the peephole what was the point it was always more or less the same even his pen between his lips he used to stare straight in front of as the uh, examinees do no they uh, what do they do they keep putting the pen between the lips and keep staring and recollecting the answers in the same way events was acting seeking it seemed some sorely needed inspiration from somewhere that is he was needing some kind of inspiration or some kind of answers he was acting in this way and opposite him mac leary seated slightly askew now what is askew means a little tilted you can say from the table now his face in semi profile semi profile means his face was partly seen his face was partly Scene. and his hair as stephens had noticed earlier amateurishly clipped pretty closely to the scalp so it was very closely clipped to the scalp means to the head and his eyes behind the pebble lenses so what kind of a lens he was wearing he was wearing the this is a pebble lens isn't it very interesting students just keep following it and then you will understand that how they escape peering short sightedly at the church times short sightedly when a person doesn't have good eyesight his right index finger hooked beneath the narrow clerical claw, collar so his right finger was hooked that is it was kept below the narrow clerical collar now clerical means you know the collar is a little high and his 
finger used to be kept there was kept there and the fingers of the left now here also there is a reason for keeping the finger oaked there fingers of the left hand the nails meticulously manicured slowly stroking the short black beard and the fingers of the left right index finger he was putting this hand and the left hand he was stroking his beard and his fingers were meticulously manicured means it was very beautifully nail nails were cut and cleaned and it was stroking his short black beard at 10:50 am the receiver crackled to life and the governor realized he had almost forgotten events for a few minutes please sir a whisper please sir that is a little louder he says events would you mind if i put a blanket round me shoulders sir so what does events ask that he wanted to put a blanket round him his shoulders it's a bit parky parky means it's a bit cold so it is parky means cold in here isn't it silence events there's one on me bunk here sir so even says there is one blanket on the bunk means on the bed mathleary be quick about it so he was doing his invigilation very very nicely he says that could get it quite quickly at 10:15 am stephens was more than a little surprised to see a gray regulation blanket draped draped means covered round even so shoulders shoulders means what the kandha kandha par leke tha and he frowned slightly and looked at the examinee more closely so stephens was looking through the people of the door so he looked very closely but evens was still in the same position that his pen was put between the teeth he was not writing and he was staring just vacantly as before blankly beneath that blanket should stephens report the slight irregularity so he was blankly sitting and stephens thought that should he report for the for the unusual behavior of uh, evens that he was not writing anything at all fishy so fishy means doubtful was it anything doubtful hadn't jackson said he looked through the people once again and even as he did so even pulled the dirty blanket more closely to himself now see the suspense he was creating he just pulled the blanket more closely to himself even pulled was the was he planning a sudden batman leap now stephens was looking through the uh, people and he was thinking that was he planning some kind of a batman leap that he would get up with the blanket and suffocate macleary in the blanket don't be daft so stephens thought that don't be daft means not to he thinks himself that he should not act like a silly person there was never any sun on this side of the prison so it was very very well understood that actually it was really cold in that part of the prison that there was no sun on the side of the prison no heating either during the summer months and it could get quite chilly in some of the cells so it was very natural that it could get quite chilly that is quite cold in some of the cells stephens decided to revert to his earlier every minute observation so what did stephens decide to revert to go back to his earlier earlier every minute observation he thought that these things should not be he should not get disturbed by these two things at 11:22 am jackson shouted along the corridor to stephens the governor wanted to speak with him hurry man stephens picked up the phone apprehensively and listened to the rapidly spoken orders now what will be the orders you see at 11 spoken oh sorry stephens himself was to accompany macleary to the main gates prison gates so the order came that stephens would be helping uh, macleary to the main prison gates understood stephens personally was to make absolutely sure that the door was locked on events after macleary had left the cell understood so all these instructions were given and at 11:25 the governor heard the final exchanges 
that is the, they take the paper examination paper and MacLeary was to 